All right, let me bring in Kelly Stack. She played on the uh, USA women's hockey team. She was in Sochi for the Olympics. It's a big deal. It was a big deal. Let me tell you something. First of all, let me. Uh, uh, good morning. How are you? I'm good, Rover. How are you? I'll tell you something. You, I saw a picture of you. I guess you ran into Dieter and Jeffrey at something. Oh, yeah. And I saw, game. Yeah, I saw a picture that was tweeted. I go, boy, this chick looks a lot. Yeah, there, she, there it is. Get the medal. I said, she looks a lot hotter than I thought she would be. I figured just being a, ho- a women's hockey player, you'd be all big and you'd have short hair. And you'd be like, <laughs> hey, you know, grabbing your crotch, walking around <laughs> like that. But no, you're, you're a good looking girl. Um, oh, first thank of, you. You're welcome. First of all, the uh, women's hockey. Now, normally I would never watch that, but I watch, of course, in the Olympics, you know, I'm watching that, I was watching your games live. I will say this, and I said this on the air, that it was, women, the games, it was exciting. It really was exciting. A lot of women's sports, you watch it, like basketball, it's, oh, I can't, I can't take that. Women playing basketball is hard to to watch. But if you didn't know that it was women, you know, you guys are all in pads with your heads, Helmet. helmets on and all that. If you didn't know it was women, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even know because the play was that fast and intense. Yeah, I mean, women's hockey is pretty much as comparable to men's, but we're just not as fast and as strong as them, and we don't check or fight usually. But yeah. every once in a while, we get in. So you've never of, been in a fight. Actually, this past season, um, we got in two fights against Canada. Oh, you did those bitches, tour. those dirty rotten bitches, Canadian bitches, <laughs> right? Yeah. What happens when you guys fight? The hair starts pulling. What do you do? Um, no, like straight up punching. You do? Yeah. You take the gloves off, like, throw them down. Grabbing the cage and L- lift. Uh, raise your microphone up a little bit so I can hear. Like uh, there, you, there you go. There, perfect. Now, uh, w- so did you actually fight yourself? Uh, I was in the first fight in yeah. um, October. Did you get a piece of this girl? Did you punch her right in the noggin? Um. We, I pulled her cage around a lot. I, didn't, I got a couple punches in, but... Why do they make you guys wear that, that, that thing, that mask in front of your face? I don't know. Probably because we're women, but... I mean, the guys don't have to do that, right? No. no the guys but... have no teeth because of it, Roller. <laughs> yeah, once they get out of college or into the professional league, they don't have to wear a cage. Have you gotten any of your teeth knocked out? No. Not, nothing None, yet. yeah. No. Yeah, I I, yeah that, that, that cage thing that was kind of throwing me off a little bit. They should, they should. I don't, I don't know. I about know that. they might get some more viewers if they could see our faces yeah. a little bit better, mm-hmm. and maybe put you in bikinis too. Yeah, I know that, that would yeah. be very hot. <laughs> uh, Kelly played uh, for Team USA. They got the silver medal from Canada. You must have been very disappointed when they beat you. Yeah, we were pretty disappointed. What, just the, hell, what the hell happened? You guys were up. I was watching this game live at home. I got home from the radio station. It was like at noon or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You guys were winning. What I happened? Know. We were winning 2 nothing, and then I think we just kind of sat back a little bit and didn't really take it to them like we should have. And two A two-goal lead is the hardest lead to keep in hockey. So Why is that? Just because... You get complacent? Yeah, pretty much. You know, if you have a one-goal lead, you still keep fighting and try to score another goal. But when you have a two-goal lead, it's like, okay, like, we're pretty safe. You know, we're up by two. Yeah. They score one, and that's no big deal because we're still up by one. You think they should make the net bigger so there's more scoring in hockey? That's one of the things. It's like soccer. There's never any scoring in soccer. It's just a bunch of dudes running back and forth. Uh, and there's one goal. And it's yeah, one right. Zero. Yeah. Football, think about it. It's 49 to 42. Right. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. People love touchdowns. Yeah. What about making this net bigger? What do you think about that idea? Yeah, I mean, I think that could be pretty interesting. Um, but then when we play some of the weaker teams, you know, the score might be like a 20 to 22 nothing to, yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of... Right. Ten or eight. What happens after you lose a heartbreaking uh, game like that? You get the silver medal. It's still good, obviously. I mean, that's. I mean, look, that's something to be proud of. But afterwards, you get back in the locker room. What's the attitude like? Well, before you get in the locker room, you have to walk through the mix zone, which is where all the media stand. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's pretty brutal, just because you know everyone's in your face asking you a ton of questions about what just happened and. How do you feel to win a silver medal when you were just up to nothing and lost the gold medal? So yeah. walking through the mix zone is pretty tough. And then you get back in the locker room and um, everyone's pretty upset and nobody really wants to. Get are girls undressed. crying in there? They yeah, are. Yeah, girls are they crying. Are. Girls, girls are, are emotional. emotional. Yeah, they're yeah. much more emotional than guys. <laughs> we can't get gold. I actually saw girls crying out there on the ice because they had to, you know, when they lose, then they had to, they did that big medal ceremony. So they had to stand out there crying in front of everyone. And. When you get back in the locker room, though, is does anyone point the finger at anyone else and say it was your fault? 
No. They I, did. I could tell by I, the look no, on your face. No. People probably wanted to do that, but um, no, I think just our captains talked a little bit and said we should be proud of ourselves. Do you then get together with like uh, like a couple days later with one girl like on the phone or something and go, oh, so-and-so, Michaela, I'm just making up a name. I don't know if there's a Michaela, but there probably is. No, there's not. Um, do you go, oh, she should have done this or she blew it or do you guys say anything like just amongst yourselves? Um, we try not to, but I mean, I'm sure there's a little bit of little talking bit. going on. Yeah. Yeah. What position do you play on the team? Uh, center. Center. All right. And, uh, you started playing at a very young age. Yeah. I was four years old. Your mother was a, let me, uh, I have it written down here. My, <laughs> a competitive freestyle roller skater. What the hell is that? Um, those are the roller skates with four wheels and it's kind of like figure old school. Yeah. Yeah. Figure skating. Was this a sport like back? In, I mean, this was, uh, I think it was kind of popular back in, you know, seventies, eighties. Yeah. In the disco era. Right. Right. Did yeah. she have like an Afro, your mom, when she was doing the roller <laughs> she, skating? She thing? probably had a pretty sick perm. <laughs> doing the roller derby <laughs> back in the day. So you start out at a, at a, uh, at an early age, you play sports throughout high school and all of this sort of stuff. What, so you played a bunch of sports, right? Yeah, I played soccer, softball, volleyball. Did uh, did everyone think that you were a lesbian because you were so <laughs> athletic? Um, I don't think at in high school they thought I was, but um, I think now on the national team, everybody knows that like I'm the straight girl. Yeah. It's yeah. just obvious. Are there a lot of lesbians in, in women's <laughs> athletics then? Um, in hockey, I'd say it's about half. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure in, you know, basketball, softball, you'll find a few here and there. How does it, how do you get on? Explain to me the process of getting on the women's hockey team for Team USA. Like, how do they pick who actually is on this team? Oh, well, they come to like our college games um, and then they invite you to a camp, which they have a couple of camps per year, August um, and December. And then, you know, they'll invite like the top like 40 or 60 college girls. Mm -hmm. There might be some that are in, still in high school if they're really good. And then it's basically just a tryout for, you know, there's a tournament in November and then there's a world championships in April. So um, those camps are the tryout process that you have to go through. And it's a bunch of off ice testing, on ice testing, and then um, practices and games. How long then do you practice as Team USA, as as one unit? How, how, how I mean, from the time that they pick everyone who's going to be on this team to the time that you're in Sochi, how much time passes? Well, for an Olympic year, it's different. Um, we'll centralize in September and then play together all year and then go to Sochi in the beginning of February. So for an Olympic year, we're together for six months. Is That that doesn't seem like that much time in order to be able to, to come together and play as one cohesive unit. It's not a lot of time, but, you know, us, the U.S. and Canada are the only two countries that really do that. Um, most of the European countries just get together for a month or two weeks before the Olympics, and that's all. Why they do they do it like that? That sounds dumb. Uh, I think because of money reasons. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if they have the... The funds to support a six month long um, tour campaign to do yeah. to do this. So, so who actually ends up paying? I mean, it, it costs a lot of money to go over there. Who? I mean, there's an Olympic committee or whatever. Yeah. I don't know who who actually foots the bill for all of this stuff. The government. Um, I think the U.S. Olympic Committee does it. I don't know if it's the government throws some money in there and then probably just donors that donate to the U.S. Olympic Committee. What was it like uh, over there in Russia? Did you just fly right into Sochi, and, and or did you get to go anywhere else in Russia? Uh, well, we went to Frankfurt, Germany first, mm -hmm. and then um, we did our processing there where we get, like, all of our clothes and um, our bags and stuff, and then we went to Sochi the next day. We flew right into Sochi. It was probably, like, a half-hour bus ride to the village, um, a lot of security. I mean, yeah, yeah. a ton of security. Uh, so you're like, like in a whole caravan. There's probably yeah. like armed guys and stuff running yeah, around there. Yeah, there was armed like military, and then there was like ships like right outside of our building in the Black Sea. Because at the time, I don't know how much where you were. Like in in the week, in about the week or two weeks leading up to the Olympics, the news got on this whole kick of there's going to be a terrorist attack. I mean, if you turned on CNN, they had all these talking head experts saying, there will be an attack. Mm -hmm. My smart money is on there being something happening at these Olympics. So, and then nothing. Yep. Um, were you guys nervous at all? or? I, th I think we were nervous like going there, but 
once we got there, we realized that it was it was pretty safe. You know, you had credentials that you wore, and you had to scan in and out of you know every place you went. Um, there was they had some type of like camera in the air that like knew where you were at all times. When you when you scanned your credential, mm -hmm. it told the camera up above. So village. they could track you pretty much. Yeah, so if, you know, you happen to leave the village and you got lost for 12 hours and you never came back, they would know that you were missing. Mm. Wow. Did Was it as dumpy as the accommodations? Was it as dumpy as it was made out in the media here? Things no. falling apart and whatnot? There was one hotel that wasn't done being built, and that was the media hotel. Probably because they, you know, worked on it last because they wanted to get, you know, the athletes' quarters all taken care of. So one hotel, and, I mean, their water was... What they said about their hotel was all true, but that was the only place that wasn't done being built. Um, where do you eat? Just in the dining hall Same in the village. Same place every time? Yeah. So and all of the athletes eat in this dining hall? So, I mean, are you seeing the people you will be competing against in there and stuff? Yeah, you're seeing all your competitors. Those, yeah, I, I refer to them as those dirty, rotten bitches from Canada. Yeah. That's how I <laughs> refer to them. I don't know how you refer to them. Yeah, but, same yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> so you see all these people in there. Now, what's the atmosphere like? Is it uh, friendly at this thing, or is it because you guys are competing against other countries and whatnot? Is there a level of, uh, you know... Uh, I don't know, competition or a level of animosity? Um, I think before the game start, it's pretty friendly. Um, we're, our team is pretty much friends with all the European teams mm -hmm. just because they're not our biggest rivals. But um, I think we're, we're friendly with Canada off the ice before the tournament. But once the tournament starts... You know, we see him in the dining hall. I look the other way. I don't even want to see him. You don't even want to look yeah. at those. Yeah, at those. Yeah. They're whores. They're all whores, <laughs> those girls. Uh, uh, Kelly Stack is here, uh, played for Team USA, women's hockey. Got the silver medal over in uh, Sochi. 1-866-YO-ROVER. That's 1-866-967-6837. Um, we were talking a, a moment ago. Charlie says that the NFL draft is like modern-day slavery. And that these athletes are, are treated and traded like slaves. Now, you're an athlete. What do you think of his comments? I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I think it's ridiculous because of the amount, amount of money they get paid. You know, if they were making no money at all, then I could see that. But they know the paycheck that they're getting. And if they didn't want to be there making that kind of money, they would do something else. Right. <laughs> they... Uh, you know, they, they are not slaves. They're treated very, very well. Um, you play for a professional team. You play, all right, so you went Pro to Boston professional, College. Professional, professional. Well, is it quote unquote? What do you mean by that? Well, we don't make any money. Oh. So it's not really professional. Why the hell do you do it then? Just because, <laughs> I know, yeah, right? Question. Yeah, that's more like slavery. Hey, than, listen, so it is. Uh, I'm know, right, well. Rover. Listen, would you like to be my news girl? We won't pay you a thing, but you can come in every day and work. I like yeah, this it's, idea. It's kind of like an internship. Yeah. Um, they pay for our travel and our hotels, but we don't bring home a paycheck from playing in the CWHL. This is the Canadian Women's Hockey League. Yes. There's five teams. Um, four of them are in Canada. One is in the U.S. and Boston. And it's basically just a place for us to play competitively once we're out of college. Because there really is not much opportunity for women's no. sports. I mean, the WNBA, they that's, I guess, the most prominent women's league. And yeah, no, there's a professional soccer league, too, but I don't know how much they get paid. But at least the girls that play on the national team get, you know, a lot of notoriety, and they're all in the media and... So what do you then do? Like, what's your game plan for life? Because here you are. A lot of these guys, you know, if you're an athlete, uh, if you're a male athlete, you do your whole, and then, hey, boom, payday at the end. You're getting five million bucks. You, you're playing on the Canadian Women's Hockey League for free. Uh, what do you plan to do with yourself? Uh, well, I mean, I was just playing in the league so that I would be ready for the Olympics. Um, and so once I'm going to retire from hockey, then I'll... Just get a job somewhere, I guess. How old are you now? Uh, 26. 26. You look younger. I thought you, I, geez, did you think she was 26? No, I thought she was like 22, yeah, 21. Yeah, me too. Yeah, well, when I was 18 and 21-ish, I people thought I was like 15. So Really? So you always Yeah, look, so hopefully when I'm 50, I'll look like 33 or something. You know, so yeah. are you then retired from hockey? I mean, at the age of 26, are you going to keep playing this? Are you done? Um, I mean, a lot of girls retire at this age, but there are some that play into their early 30s, so I haven't really decided yet. 
I swear, when I was watching these hockey games, I don't know what team she was, if it was USA, Canada, or some other country. There was some broad on there. I swear, she was like 45 years I think old. I saw her. Yeah. I mean, this woman, I go, holy mo-. She they're was like, on Canada. Yeah, they're like, she's been playing for 38 years. <laughs> uh, I mean, she's ancient. Yeah, she's like, I think she's 36 or, or right around there. Do you think you could do something like that? Would you even want to do something like that? You stay w- in it again? I wouldn't want to do something like that, no. I mean... Are you going to try and make it to the Olympics again four years from now? I don't know. It's four years away, so if if right now I don't want to, then you know next year if I decide I do want to, I can always start ramping up the training. And This was your first Olympics, correct? <laughs> second. Oh, this was your second? Yeah, I oh. went to Vancouver in 2010. What did you guys do there in Vancouver? Did you guys medal? Uh, we got silver. You got silver. But that wasn't even a game. We lost 2 nothing, and it was, it wasn't They were better exciting. than us back then. This time around, we were definitely the better team. So you've got two silver medals. Yeah. Dieter told me that that thing is pretty heavy, the silver yeah, medal. Yeah, I, ha- I brought them both. Oh, wow, she's got them both. You uh, don't need two. Let me take one of those things off your hand. Kelly Stack is here with us, uh, played on Team USA Hockey. All right, which one mm-hmm. is which? Uh, the... Uh, so this one is from Vancouver. The one that's sort of wavy. Oh, yeah. let, me, let me hold and this then thing. This one Robert, use both so hands. Cheap. You're gonna probably drop it uh, so heavy. Uh, let, me, let me try this Vancouver one first. Oh, this thing is, is heavy. It solid, man. Oh, I like this. <laughs> oh, does there does it say women's hockey, women's hockey on it, Rover? Anywhere? It says. I think on the back. Yeah. Hockey, Sir Grace, Femme. So could Femme, you get yeah. away with wearing that, Rover? And- Damn. Picking up chicks? I would just put like a, uh, I would put a, uh, like a sticker on the back. Yeah. You know, with whatever sport I think I could get away with playing. Like badminton? Kelly of. <laughs> you get away with that, Rover. Yeah, like if, if I were going to try and pass myself off as an athlete, what sport should I say I was in? Um, You could probably do like. Luge Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Actually, You're luge luge or... Probably curling. Curl. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. All right, let me see this other one. What's the difference Social. between the two? They're just different designs. I yeah. think they design them each. Well, I each thought you time. only get one. I don't know how it works. No, she went to two different Olympics, moron. Oh, oh that's what I'm asking. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. She just said that. Yeah. And that one's all. The first one's all curved. Yeah, it's all like bent. It up. looks melt like melted, yeah. and that one's straight. Yeah, this one is straight, but it has a uh, like a glass a glass. Oh, that's sweet. Insert in there, or whatever. Yeah. What do you do with these when you're at home? Do you uh, where do you keep these? Just in a drawer. That's it? Yeah. You don't put I them mean, up on display? I would I would put this around my neck and walk around with this thing all 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 day long. Sleep with it, shower with it. Yeah. I'd be like a rapper with this thing. I'd be like Flava Flav. <laughs> I got the Parmatown Mall wearing my silver medal. You know, hey, look yeah, at me. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Why don't you keep those out on display? Um, I don't know. I take them with me, you know, right now. I'll, I'll take them with me wherever I go just because the Olympics are pretty fresh, and people probably want to see them. But, right, right. Um, you know, next year I'll put them away, and nobody will really ask about them because it will be 2015, and people have forgotten about it already. You say you say that you will just do something after you know you're 26 now. You'll go get a job. What do you want to do? You have any idea what kind of job you want to do? No, no idea. My major uh, was communication and human development at Boston College. So. I don't even know what the hell that means. Human development. Yeah, what is- that's like a teaching path but oh, i don't really okay. want to do that right is are the olympics you can be honest here i heard it's a total f fest there like just an orgy up. yes i heard about yes that. it's an orgy with athletes that's what i've heard um not that i know of i mean i know of a one of the u.s speed skating girls is engaged to a netherlands speed skating guy did she meet him there so, at the olympics i don't know when they met uh-huh. but they probably met you know at a world championships or maybe they met in vancouver or something but i heard they have a bowl of condoms rover just in the hotel rooms all over, just condoms. Because so the, yeah, that's what I've heard. This is what's in the media, that the, the athletes, they're so testosterone-filled, I guess, or estrogen yeah, or whatever the hell. In shape, They're just toned. friggin' horny. Yeah. Horny, horny, horny. Well, in Vancouver, they had um, baskets of them in the dining hall, like right by the door. Condoms? Yeah. See, oh, wow. it's so, true. So wow. when you walked in and out, you know, you could just grab a handful or whatever. But in Sochi, they didn't have them in the dining hall. You had to go to the clinic 
to get one. Oh, who so wants to do that? My teammates and I went and got our teeth cleaned, and of course, I grabbed the couple for souvenirs. I'm like, oh, my brother will love this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good cover yeah. there, yeah. Mom, just souvenir. Yeah, yeah mom, it's a yeah. souvenir. Now, if you go and you grab all these uh, rubbers out of the the big bowl that they have in Vancouver, do your teammates look at you and go, what are you, what are you gonna go get some uh, some D? From- I didn't, I didn't take any in Vancouver, you but. Didn't. No, I wish I would have just to compare the two, but... Yeah, if um, Russia's using that bowl, and France, once you start poking holes in all those <laughs> condoms and screw them over... <laughs> did, uh, did, so, like, are guys hitting on you there, like other athletes and stuff? Uh, not so much. I mean, I heard that people were on Tinder in Sochi, but... Like athletes were? Yeah. Hooking up with like, other athletes? Uh-huh. Yeah, like, I don't know. I've never really been on Tinder, but... That's what I heard in the media, mm-hmm. what was going on. The, uh, so uh, are you single now? You have a boyfriend? Or no, what? I have a boyfriend. You do? Yeah. How long you had this boyfriend for? Um, four years. Oh, my God. Four years? What the hell's wrong with you? Four <laughs> years. You going to get married, you think? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And how did you meet this guy? Um, I met him in 2010, one of my teammates. It's her older brother's best friend. Her older brother's best friend. Yeah, so, so I was just there for like a 4th of July party and- and he, he, just worked, he worked it on you? No, I worked it on oh, him. Oh, you worked it on him? Yeah. Really? You're aggressive, huh? <laughs> wow. No, it was mutual. So you don't know if you're going to get married. You might someday. You might. No, we will. You definitely yeah. will get married, yeah. you think? For sure. You want to well, have kids? Well, after being at a few weddings, I don't, I don't want to have a big wedding or anything. It's too hectic and too yeah. much of a headache. I'd rather just have a big party in the backyard. Rob, my producer, uh, does all a bunch of prep for every guest that we have that uh, comes in. He tries to find all sorts of scandals and embarrassing stuff <laughs> and things like that. And there's really not much we could dig up on Kelly Stack other than there was some sexting scandal years ago. What was this all about? Um, I mean, my coach just sent me an appropriate text. This is in what? High school? College or what? Uh, college. This was in college. So yeah. you're, he sent you some text messages. Yeah. And then how did this get discovered? Um, one of my teammates found it on like an old cell phone I had in my drawer. It was turned off. And then, and then they no turned it. They turned it, it on. Wait. Yeah. So they had to then put it in the charger. Yeah. Turn it on. But I mean, I wasn't the only one that like got like racy texts that, no, I, that right. I know of. Did you respond back? I did. Yeah. But you can't blame her for yeah, that. I, I, mean, know, I, know. I was 18 at the time, so. Right, right, right. But the, the guy did he get fired or something? Yeah. Yeah. Did so the person who did it, they had to actually turn your cell phone on. They they must have known what they were looking for. Then they did this on purpose. Probably, I would imagine. Were you very angry at this teammate? Like, how could you do this to me? You're ratting me out. Yeah, I mean, I just figured that she was jealous. Did you fight? Because I was good. Did you fight? No, we didn't fight. No, you no. yelled at her though, right? No, I just I never really spoke to her after that. This turned into like a big thing, and like Inside Edition was calling your house, and yeah. people are trying to like. When you go through something like that, like, wh- I mean, what do your parents do when they find out about this? I mean, because it's embarrassing, probably, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it is embarrassing. But really, I don't even know. It shouldn't really, I don't know. It, it shouldn't be that embarrassing. Like, I don't think you did anything wrong, no. necessarily. And, you know, I don't know if, I guess maybe the guy did something wrong. But, like, your mom, obviously, that's the worst part, is that, yeah, like, your parents have part. to see this yeah, on the news or something, and oh, my God. What did they say to you? Did they say, stay out of trouble, Kelly? Yeah, they pretty much were like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I know. Yeah, but the, all of that is behind you now. Yeah. And, and uh, so this is not the guy that you're, that's not your boyfriend. Oh, now, that no. would be a good scam. Yes, if that, she dated the coach and married Yes, herself. yes, yeah, the yeah, sex yeah. was so hot and heavy that she, <laughs> after college, she hooked up with that guy. Yeah. No. Well, so you have no idea what you want to do with yourself, what your next uh, career path no, will be. No, I mean, I thought about something in criminal justice, but I don't have a degree in it, so maybe I'll be like a, stri- a state trooper You're going to go back to school again? You don't want to do that, do you? Um, I don't know. I can get my master's through DeVry University. They have a partnership with the United States Olympic Committee. Oh, yeah. Do so you, I can get that for- where do you live? Do you live out here or do you live uh, in Boston? I live still, right, or? well, my mom's house is right down the street from here in Brooklyn Heights. Okay. So literally two minutes away. So you still live out here then, basically? Well, back and forth between here and Boston, but I've mainly been in Boston for like the last six years. Yeah. Kelly went to uh, high school with B2, my girlfriend. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yes. B2. Which is, now, B2 told me that she didn't, I go, I, 
talking about herself about Britney. She, I go, man, guys must have hit on you, Britney, in high school. She goes, no, no guys ever hit on me. I don't buy that. I mean, come on. She goes, no, guys. She goes, in my high school, people weren't hooking up. I go, are you kidding me? Any high school people. Are hooking, every high are school people about? are hooking up. I, I don't know if she was oblivious to what was going on or what. Uh, I think she was just shy. Yeah. Yeah, she was more like... Not geeky, but like <laughs> no, not geeky, but like she uh, cared. <laughs> she cared about her schooling more than anything. She always had to, you know, have a four point Yeah, she said there was not much partying going on in school. I, well, there was partying. I just don't think she, she just wasn't invited. Basically. No, she, yeah. not that she wasn't invited. I just don't think she hung around with the crowd that partied. Yeah, yeah. Did you do a lot of partying in high school and stuff? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Not too much. I mean, I had older brother and sister, so. I hung out with older do kids. Do they, do they, like, if you're going to play for the Olympics, they must do drug testing yeah, and things they do. like that. Uh, they basically have to know where I'm at at all times. I have to send them updates, and they can come anytime. Now, normally they're doing this for performance-enhancing drugs, but even if you were smoking weed or something, that would that um, would they kick you off the team if you smoked weed? You would just get a uh, suspension, and you probably wouldn't be able to play in, you know, a couple of tournaments. But weed isn't banned out of competition. So you can, you could still So, smoke. like, right now, we don't have anything going on. You you're smoke smoking weed tons of weed is what you're telling me. Yeah, <laughs> no. she was out in the parking yeah. lot. I started toking it up. No. <laughs> well, uh, listen, I'm I'm glad that you came in. And uh, uh, it's fantastic. The, the very exciting watching those games. It really was. And the, the women... Women's hockey is exciting. They're actually good players. It's a good sport to watch for uh, girls. Let me, oh wait, let me go to, uh, B- oh wait. let me talk to Bob in Rochester, uh, Dom, quickly here. I have a, Dom's taking too long with this guy. Here, here, Bob in Rochester. Go ahead, Bob, quickly. Hey, Rover, what's going on? Hey, man, what's up? Hey, I just wanted to point out how stupid Charlie really is, all right? If you really look at every player that gets drafted into the NBA, and into the NFL, first old, first round, even second round, they all get drafted out of college. Yeah. So they're going to school, they're getting an education, they're they're learning something. Every hockey player that gets drafted in the first round or the second round, they're all coming out of semi pro leagues. They're all coming out of places where they were making money before they they started making real money. All right. They, they they weren't going to school. They weren't learning anything, which is why you see a lot of hockey players when they get out of hockey or they retire, they don't have anything. They just go back to coaching. Right. Whereas okay. guys where they, where they oh, come out of the NFL over. and the NBA. All right. All right. Thank you, Bob. I know this guy's going on and on. I, I'm just bored. What was he talking about? Did you understand? I'm not no, even sure. I, I fell asleep. Sarah, you're on Rover's Morning Glory. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, hi, Rover. Enough about the draft already. Gosh. Hey, um, hey, Kelly, how are you? Good, how are you, Sarah? Good. Dieter, I'll be thinking about you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, I had a meet and greet with Kelly. She's so sweet. Oh, you met her? Yeah, we met her at our kids' ice rink. My kids are both in hockey, and uh, she posed with my daughter's flat Stanley, and she let her wear the medal. It was so nice of her. She was really sweet. So she wasn't a uh, stuck-up, like uh, we were talking about celebrity, like LeBron James. You ever met LeBron James? No, I have not. I've never heard one nice thing about LeBron James. I haven't James. either. Yeah, everyone that meets him, he says that, you know, yeah. the guy's a, a, a prick, basically. But you, I mean, you enjoy it, because look, this is... You've gone to two Olympics now. I mean, this is what you what you do it for, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a total celebrity, but you know, when I see little kids at the hockey rink, it's fun to interact with them and um, make them smile, show them the medal, and um, because you never know, you're probably never going to see an Olympic medal in real life. I know, no, I know. A few people. I-, I was shocked when I first saw it. Yeah, no, it's that's awesome. Sweet. Hey, uh, Kelly, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, well, let me go. Let me go to one last caller here quickly. Jimmy, you're on Rover's Morning Glory with Kelly Stack. Uh, good morning, Jimmy. Yeah, why, Rover? Arbe, what's up, man? Uh, nothing. Played hockey with Kelly, and uh, I had a quick question for her. Yes. So, Kelly, uh, it's Irwin. What's if, up? If Johnny Manziel asked you out today, would you go out on a date with him? Ooh, good question. Keep it um, Cleveland. Well, I know he has a girlfriend, so we could probably go on a double date, me, him, my boyfriend, and his girlfriend. What if his girlfriend were uh, crushed by uh, a semi-truck? 
He's single. He calls you and asks you. you do you like Johnny Manziel? I do, yeah. He's. Um, so you must be thrilled yeah, that the Browns oh, picked him. Over the moon. Um, if he asks you out on a date, what do you do? I don't know. That's I mean, a you tough have this question. boyfriend of four years, but yeah. it's Johnny friggin' Manziel. <laughs> Johnny football, man. I wouldn't go on a date, but I would go. I would go out and you'd have, go out with him. Yeah. Tease him. You know what? No, you know I what that means. Him. One thing leads to another. I'd, you go I'd out. Bring, you have a few drinks. I'd bring V right. two with me. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. All right. She'd she'd be your C block for Johnny Manziel. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right, Kelly. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything that you uh, do from here on out. Uh, I do have to take a break. Do we have, Rob, I think we have, I don't know if we have another guest coming in today. No, or no guest. All right, let me take a uh, quick break. Kelly, thank you for coming in. Kelly Stack, her Twitter account is kstack16, kstack16, if you want to follow her on Twitter. Let me take a quick break. We'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang on. Rover's Morning Glory.